Hello and welcome back to the third part of this introductory talk about IMTA and the Integrate project. In the second part, I was talking a little bit about the environmental benefits and the economic benefits of integrating multi-trophic aquaculture and creating this circular economy for aquaculture. In the third and last section, I'm going to deal a little bit about what the bottlenecks are and how we can overcome those bottlenecks. So, what are the potential problems of IMTA cultivation? I think first and foremost, there's an issue of risk. And this risk is multifaceted. There's different types of risk. And this risk is relevant to different people. So, so if we just think about the fish farmer, they have a successful business that's based on the production of fin fish. They don't want anything to come along that will risk that primary business. And IMTA has a number of perceived risks associated with it. One risk that we often hear about is what happens if the additional seaweed or the additional shellfish comes unattached in a storm and blows into our cage of finfish. And that's quite a real risk given that every cage of fish is, can be worth up to a million pounds. So we need to make sure that we have systems of production which are robust and suitable for the open water conditions in which they can be placed. But more importantly, we need to work with farmers and, uh, and equipment manufacturers to make sure that we can minimise that risk and more importantly, or equally importantly, minimise the perception of that risk to an appropriate level. But there's also other types of risk from regulators. Regulators are nervous about new uh, forms of production and where there isn't a tried and tested IMTA system, they may be nervous about licensing a, a new system uh, because they have no previous track record. So they, they need to better understand what the environmental risks are from IMTA systems and how they can be uh, managed. Another really important consideration and uh, a reason why there's been limited uptake is cost. So for this diversification, there is a high degree of capital cost and there's quite a high degree of operational cost. Aquaculture is already a capital intensive business and when you're growing something such as shellfish or mussels, you invest in capital in year zero, but it may not be till year two or year three, you're seeing a return on that capital. So when you're developing new business models, this uh, delay in return, this high upfront cost, can be a real barrier to the development of the industry. So again, the industry is looking for good examples of how that additional cost uh, and that uh, delay in uh, return on your revenue, how that can be managed and what the expected returns are. There's also an issue around the uh, spatial mismatch between your primary crop, your, uh, your fin fish production and your shellfish production or your seaweed production. So typically in Europe, uh, fin fish production is a very ex intensive production. So within a hectare, for example, you may produ be producing a thousand tons of salmon. In that same area, that same hectare, you can produce, or in an adjacent hectare, you can produce a much lower quantity of mussels or a much lower quantity of seaweed. So if you think that to take up the nutrients from one hectare of fin fish production, to take up about 10% of the nutrients, you need around 10 hectares of mussel production or around 10 hectares of seaweed production. So there's a much greater extent of aquaculture required to deal with those waste streams. And this may be problematic in terms of licensing to get a license for this extended area, but it also may be problematic from society's perception of how the seas you should be used. To, to develop IMTA to, to a scale within the European context will require 
a larger area of that seed to be licensed to aquaculture production. And we have to understand whether society is willing to, to allow that to happen and to understand whether the mechanisms uh, are in place through regulation and policy to promote uh, that development. An important component of this is by uh, showing the environmental benefit that this co-culture can uh, bring along with it. So how do we overcome some of those ob obstacles? Well, as I've alluded to, a lot of the issues around risk can be dealt with through increasing uh, engagement with stakeholders, better familiarity of farmers with uh, the different production systems, and specifically through the design, better design of cages and shellfish production systems for, I, for an IMTA context. There also needs to be encouragement from local and uh, international regulation to promote this form of more environmental su sustainable aquaculture. So uh, there can be locational guidelines written that would need that there needs to be a certain percentage of extracted organisms within a water body or the farmer could be given additional production capacity of their fin fish for the environmental remediation that they undertake. So there's quite a lot that uh, policy providers and regulators can do to promote IMTA. The other way we can uh, deal with some of the issues of risk and the uncertainty is to model the uh, aquaculture system to better understand what the environmental benefits will be and what will be the benefits in terms of the economics. One such model that's now available on the market is the farm model and this can allow for the development of an IMTA system within a model. So in this uh, model run here we have cages of finfish, we have uh, mussels as the extractive organisms and we have seaweed as the extractive organisms. And when we run this model, this model will predict how much of the excess nutrients are removed from uh, the environment, how much extra production in terms of mussels and shellfish are created and uh, what extra value that can bring to the farmer. And these modelling tools allow better business planning uh, for the farmers and also allows environmental regulators to better understand how much or how, what quantity, what percentage of the nutrients are going to be extracted using any particular system. Another type of model which can be very valuable to the development of IMTA is the use of hydrodynamic models. So this is a, a output from a hydrodynamic model of the west coast of Scotland showing how the currents run between different areas. So we can use that type of model, number one, to understand how the nutrient flows between your fin fish and your extracted organisms uh, will occur and where is the best place to, to put your fin fish or your shellfish and your seaweed. But it also allows you to understand what the hydrodynamic forces will be on your cages, on your uh, shellfish and your seaweed farms so that you can better engineer them to deal with those conditions. So there are a number of things we can do to overcome the bottlenecks to, to help promote IMTA within Europe. And many of those are being done as part of the Integrate project. Also as part of the Integrate project, we need to try and understand where IMTA is going in the future. And these are some of the drivers that we are looking at within the project. So can we use IMTA to allow greater production of finfish at any one site by removing some of those environmental wastes and allowing for a greater volume of the finfish production at the site? If we can do that, this suddenly makes IMTA much more attractive to finfish produ uh, producers. It allows them to increase and grow their aquaculture production and which if we remember right all the way back to the first part, given that we have a growing population, increasing demand for seafood, increasing the production of seafood within Europe is an important component of our food security. So can we use IMTA to, to increase that finfish production? Can we also get a better understanding of what the nutrient reduction is in the open environment? And can we use that as a licensing tool or a marketing aspects to say that 
This aquaculture production is 10% more efficient, 10% more environmentally friendly than non-IMTA systems. To do that, we need to have uh, a better understanding of how we, we measure and how we certify those, uh, those claims. Another major thing which we need to look at is creating a better economic model for IMTA. Normally within uh, aquaculture, finfish uh, return a much greater revenue for the fish farmer than either seaweed or shellfish. Is there a way we can add value to the seaweed and the shellfish products to make them more economically attractive uh, to the thin fished farmer? If they become more economically attractive, they are easier, it is easier to integrate them into the IMTA system economically and that uh, produces a greater environmental benefit. So the Integrate project is working with farmers across Europe who, who have looked at IMTA and said, this is a system of production I want to develop to try and provide some of the tools for those farmers to overcome the bottlenecks. But more importantly, it's also a, show, uh, a showcase for other farmers to understand more about IMTA, to see it in action and see whether it can be implemented at their farms and hopefully to develop some of the technologies and some of the uh, policy guidelines that will help develop IMTA within Europe uh, in, in the future. If you want to know more about IMTA or more about the Integrate project, please go to the website uh, where there will be more online learning materials as well as up-to-date uh, outputs from the project. There's also a portal to get in touch with the project, so if you have some specific questions, then go to the website, ask them, and we'll see if we can find out more about IMTA together. Yeah.